Good morning, Village School, and welcome to today's live newscast. We hope you had a good weekend. Your newscast is your ally from Mrs. Lococo's class. And also Jasmine from Mrs. Lococo's class. Today is Monday, October 26, 2009. It is 8 day 3. The character education thought of the day is trusting your friends will help them trust you. And now for your up to your minute weather. Today is expected to be mostly sunny. The current temperature is 40 degrees Fahrenheit. The high is expected to be 62 degrees Fahrenheit. The low this evening will be 38 degrees Fahrenheit. Tomorrow will be expected cloudy with a chance of shower. There will be outdoor recess today. Today's lunch will be Philly cheesesteak. At this time, please stand for the flag salute. I, I pledge allegiance to the flags. flags. Good morning, Mr. Byrne, and thank you for coming on our news program. Last week we shared some general information about your background, and now that we have you in person, can you tell us a little more about yourself? Sure. Um, first of all, it's really nice to be here, and I have to say, you guys have a really nice school. Um, I grew up in West Orange, up in the northern part of New Jersey, and I went to a really good elementary school too, and I'm very grateful for that. So I've gone on, and um, we moved down here um, to Princeton. Um, when I was 19, um, my father got elected governor, and I had just started at Princeton University. So I've had a career where I've combined um, interest in politics with um, um, a business that I started that um, helps other people manage their money. So that's the kind of stuff I do. We will be voting in our own mock election next week. What do you think are some of the issues elementary school children should be thinking about? Well, if Governor Corzine were here himself, he would say the most important issue is you guys. He thinks that education is the most important issue um, facing the state of New Jersey, and he thinks it because it's really important that all of you get a good education. And so um, even in a difficult time, the governor has made education and spending on schools like this one, his top priority. Um, now, I would go on and say, you should also think about your parents and what helps them, which are good jobs and things like that, and also grandparents, what helps them. And um, a lot of senior citizens need um, um, special care and attention, and it's important to think about them, too. Having been an elected official, what kind of feelings do you experience on election day? Well, Election Day has always been very exciting for me. And I remember when I was your age, um, I could go to the um, election place, and I couldn't vote, of course, because I was too young, but they had practice voting machines for kids, and I remember I got to vote for my grandpa because he was um, a candidate too. And it was fun to even on a practice machine vote for him. So I've always found Election Day itself to be very exciting. But I think the most important thing is to, even at your age, really get informed about the issues and what's going on um, and to understand current events. And by the look of this place and the news program that you have, I think you guys are doing a pretty good job. What are some of the most important responsibilities of a governor? Of a governor. Well, a governor is um, kind of in charge of the state, just like a principal is in charge of the school. and. Um, uh, a governor is in charge of the state government, and the state government, um, its biggest responsibility is education and schools, but it also has responsibilities for things like public safety and policemen and firemen and stuff like that, and the roads didn't just come out of nowhere, right? So the government's in charge of building roads and um, all kinds of other things, in charge of health programs and um, a lot of different responsibilities. There are almost 20 different departments in state government that have all kinds of responsibilities to, um, uh, for the common welfare, so to speak. What are some of the things our next governor needs to address as soon as he takes office? Well, instead of going back over the issues like education that I just talked about, um, the governor is going to have a kind of a complicated problem and maybe I can put it in these terms suppose you walk into a store and you see something that you really want to buy for a dollar but you only have 75 cents um, you have a problem right 
Well, the state is kind of in the same situation. And so the next governor is going to have to figure out uh, how to pay for all the important things. Because right now, um, the economy is a little bit messed up. And so um, the government's not collecting as much in taxes as it needs to pay for all the things it wants to do. And so the next governor is going to have to um, really think hard about that. And one of the things the governor wants to do is try to make um, um, all of the schools in New Jersey as nice as this one. Because some of the schools in New Jersey are 100 years old, really old. And it's time to build new ones. And so the governor's been working really hard on that and is going to continue to do that. How can the governor improve education in schools like ours? Well, um, one of the important things is what I was just talking about, having a really nice school to be in. Um, and then um, it's obviously important to have really good teachers, and it's important to have classes that um, aren't too large so that everybody gets some individual attention and everybody gets called on and stuff like that. And so um, there's a lot of things to do, but I think those are some of the most important ones. What can kids do to have an impact on government? Well, um, kids can help out at a young age. First of all, um, you can talk to your parents um, about the election and who you think they should vote for. A lot of times, um, parents tell kids who they think um, they should vote for, but you guys can say, well, you know, I heard this thing, or I learned that thing, or I read an article, and so you can have a discussion, and um, um, so talk to your parents, you can talk to your friends, and um, read articles, and then um, a lot of kids, more teenagers, but kids can start getting involved in campaigns by um, volunteering in headquarters and passing out literature. And sometimes it's fun just to go to events and see politicians and listen to them speak. So those are some of the things you can do. When you were a kid, how did you feel to have a dad as governor? Well, um, remember, I was 19 um, when my dad got elected. Um, but even though I was older, it was still really exciting, and um, uh, it's a hard job, and my dad probably had to um, um, work harder than um, a lot of people. You're, not, you're never really off duty, so to speak. I mean, your schedule can go from 7 o'clock in the morning to you know, 9 or 10 o'clock at night, and every day, not, not just on Monday through Friday. Um, but it was exciting, and I got to meet a lot of really neat people. I got to meet some presidents and things like that. And um, I'm the oldest of seven children, and so my youngest brother was only three. And so for him, um, we had you know, kind of a regular house where I grew up, and then we moved into this really big house. And um, it was kind of cool. Um, and so it was exciting in a lot of ways. But the most exciting thing, I think, was just um, getting to travel all over New Jersey and meeting lots of really neat and interesting people. Do you have any responsibilities to help your dad when he was governor? Well, um, yeah, I did give my dad um, advice, and I helped him on his campaigns. And um, just like today, Governor Corzine, yeah, he has a lot of places he's trying to um, get all over the state, and there's over 8 million people here. And so he can't be everywhere, even though he would have loved to have come here. Um, he just couldn't today because he had too many other things. And so I did some of that same stuff for my father. I would go around and I would give speeches to a couple hundred people. And at first I was nervous, but um, the more you do it, the easier it gets. And then there were certain issues, particularly issues affecting young people, that I would tell my father my opinion. And sometimes he would listen. He didn't always take my advice, but he at least listened, so that was good. Did you live in the governor's mansion? Well, I had a room in the governor's mansion, but even though I was the oldest kid, I got the smallest bedroom, which I didn't like so much. But the reason I got the smallest bedroom is because I wasn't there that much because I was already in college. So on vacations and at times like that, um, I was home. And the other thing that was cool is um, because I went to Princeton University, which is right down the street from the governor's residence, if something really special um, was going on, um, I could come home and be part of it. So do you guys remember the name Jimmy Carter? He was a president um, um, quite a while ago. 
And um, but when he was running for president, he came to our house and slept overnight. So I got to talk to him for a really long time, and that was really neat. What has been your favorite job? Well, um, a lot of people are really lucky that they have one job that they've always known they want to do. Like some people know, even when they're your age, they want to grow up to be a doctor or a policeman or whatever. And I like to do a lot of different things. And one of the things that's fun about government is there are a lot of different challenges. And so um, every day there's, there's new situations that um, are kind of complicated problems that you get to help solve. And so that's one of the reasons that government really interests me. What made you want to enter politics? Well, um, one of the reasons to enter politics is that it really is an opportunity to help other people. I think around here we're really pretty lucky. And not everybody is, is quite so lucky, whether um, kids who live in, in some bad parts of our cities or kids that live in poor countries in Africa or wherever. And so politics gives you a real chance to help other people that um, you want to help. Now back to our newscasters.